The 2013 Pirelli World Challenge Championship continues at a beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida, although today it is an overcast St. Petersburg, which might just add some drama to the unfoldings as the drivers of the Pirelli World Challenge get ready to go with round number two, the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge presented by StopTech. Hi everybody and welcome to our Pirelli World Challenge pre-race show. I'm Greg Creamer, joined once again by Jeff Lepper. We're in the Optima Batteries fan zone, sort of an epicenter of fan activities in the Pirelli World Challenge paddock. Yesterday, the autograph session, this place was swarming with fans and they've been so kind once again to let us come in and set up for our booth for the pre-race show, which we're delighted to be able to bring to you this season as we step up our webcast live Pirelli World Challenge race coverage. And Jeff, we had an amazing race that unfolded yesterday, incredible racing in both of the categories, developments late in the race that made those last few laps even more interesting. But as sometimes happens in that true final lap in tech, a little bit of a problem and a change at the front. Yeah, that's for sure. Ryan Diallo driving the Privacy Star Intrust Bridgehampton Porsche 911 GT3, a little bit out of compliance in that front splitter. So unfortunately, he's been disqualified, no points, no prize money, Move to the rear today because, of course, the field set by fastest race lap. Of course, when you're DQ'd, no race time, no nothing, he starts last. So that's going to be interesting to watch him and what happens as they try and come up through the pack. There's a little bit of a ripple effect, but as you said, the grid for today pretty much set by the, the, the fastest laps in yesterday's race. Great story, James Sifronis in that Global Motorsports Group Audi is going to be on the pole, but right next door, one of those Volvos, and we've been you know, kind of laughing about it. Other cars start, the Volvos launch, and this is a standing start today. Oh yes, absolutely. Yesterday was the rolling start, of course. You saw that live right at worldchallengetv.com. Uh, today, standing start, and to watch Alex Figgy in that second place get all four of those Pearly P0s light up at the start, it is a sight to see. Please tune in for that. But yeah, James Rafanis, we didn't really talk about him much. You know, it was neither one of our picks, and he's sort of just kind of a dark horse in that brand new Audi R8, and uh, here he is on pole for round number two. Yeah, we weren't exactly sure just how that was going to suss out where that Audi would run. We know the strengths and, and weaknesses, if you will, of the other cars proved that was a good package. Interestingly, after the race, he said he tinked the wall early and the car wasn't good, but then it got better and better and better. And he said, I was there right at the end, clearly, when he ends up with the fastest race lap. So it's going to be fun to see what unfolds there today. In yesterday's race, GTS, uh, that la late pass, Jack Baldwin put on, on Andy Lee in victory circle. Andy Lee said, you know what, it was almost a pleasure to be submitted to that pass by Jack Baldwin. He said, he's a living legend. And he said, it was glorious to watch, even though it dropped me back a spot. He said, if, if I had to get beat, I'm glad I was to Jack, because racing a guy like that is what this is all about. Fantastic racing in GTS. Yeah, when that late caution we had, I think that actually benefited both drivers. Talking to both of them, Andy Lee, you noticed, had a little bit of smoke coming out. Said, wasn't sure what it was. They went ahead and changed the diff, changed the transmission, drained all the fluids, made sure everything's good. But Jack Baldwin said they had a little bit of a water leak. Mm -hmm. So it was helping both drivers there. So who knows what the outcome would have been if we would have stayed green. You can always play the what if game. Absolutely. But with the battle that those two drivers had, and you always got Petey Cunningham lurking now, finishing in third place. So we we'll are have to watch out how that's going to transpire today. Well, and that was an interesting story too, because PD was actually back in fifth, starting that you know late in in that race. Didn't have you know one of the top three times in the race in terms of where he starts today. But what happened was a big move, sort of a dive bomb move by Mr. Gleason came down underneath, clipped Lawson Aschenbach, and the savvy seven-time champion Petey Cunningham went thank you, tiptoes through, ends up in the podium. The guy is a point scoring machine. That is amazing, really. That real-time HPD Acura TSX is hooked up, and uh, that's going to watch him this race, definitely, on round number two. Absolutely. Now, in the race yesterday, of course, was the first time this season we got to see some of the new programs, some of the new drivers that are part and parcel of the championship this year. Some great developments in both categories, but we've got some wonderful machinery that is running now in the GT category, some true European supercars, the Audis, but also those glorious looking and sounding and running Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, those SLS, AMG, yeah. those things are absolutely gorgeous. Of course, the GT3 cars from Europe being allowed to run in the GT class now, a lot of different makes, models. We have a beautiful McLaren GT3 here. Hopefully we can get a couple of those in the series, but there's nothing prettier than Tim Pappas's and Peter Lassafuri 
Mercedes SLSs, those things are gorgeous. And if you have a chance to come to any World Challenge race, those are the first cars you want to come and look at because they are amazing. They are beautiful. And as a matter of fact, a little bit earlier in the weekend, I had a chance to talk with the principals of one of those programs. As we're getting this new season of Pirelli World Challenge underway, one of the enthralling things is the influx of some great new cars and some drivers in both of the categories. After some running now, rumbling through the paddock, prettiest car by far is the one from Black Swan Racing, this beautiful Mercedes that's been brought into the program. And I'm with team owner and driver Tim Pavis. And Tim, about a decade ago, you ran World Challenge, but in touring car, you're now back with some serious GT Thunder. What's the draw? What brought you back to World Challenge? Well, honestly, um, Pirelli World Challenge has continued to get more and more competitive. And when the opportunity came up with the Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 to bring it to the United States to be the first to campaign it in the North American Racing Series, Black Swan Racing jumped at the chance. And we're, we're really excited to be here. Um, I, had, I have a lot of fond memories of racing in Pirelli World Challenge. And obviously, it's a big step from touring car to GT. Uh, but I'm really excited. And I think after several years of running GT cars in endurance championships, this is going to be a fun change to go, go for it at the start and see what happens. No share in the car. It's all selfish about you and this beast in, in, in 50 minutes. You've run GT Challenge Porsches. You took a shot at some LMP2 racing. So you've driven some, a wide variety of stuff. What's this thing like to drive? You know, the uh, AMG SLS GT3 is, it's a fantastic car. It's really, really balanced. It's really easy to drive. It's the kind of car that when you drive it, you think, you know, you could triple stint at Sebring without any problems. So in a 50 minute race, you know, I think that we're going to have some really a big advantage on tire degradation. It's very easy on its tires and it's easy on me. So hopefully we can stay, you know, head down and, and go after it. We're looking forward to you flogging it uh, just a little while. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. I don't think there's any question that that car is stunning sitting still. And then Tim Pappas wants, uh, obviously it's going to be a development, you know, developmental year for those guys uh, to kind of get things up to speed. And uh, But it sure is a good looking car and it's a great sounding machine. Oh yeah, that Black Swan Racing team, if anybody can do it in the paddock, it's going to be them multiple, multiple endurance race wins coming over to a sprint race format. That is going to be a little bit of an adjustment, but he's running World Challenge before. Mm -hmm. He'll make the custom and the team will make, make the adjustments and he'll be right there. Yeah, changing it up and that's always a good thing, of course. Now, we talked about what unfolded in, in the race yesterday as a result of that DQ of the winning car on track. Alex Figge in the K-Pax Volvo did get the win. Of course, he started on pole, led most of the race. And what we're very excited about is Alex has uh, popped in and is going to be our guest when we come back for our next segment here. So don't go anywhere as we're going to continue with our Pirelli World Challenge pre-race show when we come back. Alex Figge, right here. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge is being brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source, by GoPro, be a hero, and by Pirelli, power is nothing without control. The Pirelli World Challenge, the most intense and unique sports car racing on the planet. Multiple classes running at the same time, but in a sprint format. Some of the world's top manufacturers and the world's best drivers, all beginning with standing starts. It is truly sports car wars. For series and event ticket information, check out world-challenge.com. To watch replays of all the intense action, check out world-challenge-tv.com. And always check it out, Pirelli World Challenge on Facebook. Welcome back to the Optima Battery Fan Zone and our Pirelli World Challenge pre-race show. Once again, a huge thanks to the folks at Optima Battery. Awesome product and also awesome people giving us an opportunity to do our pre-race show from this fabulous location. Again, it is the Pirelli World Challenge Championships. It's the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge presented by StopTech. And we had an amazing race unfold yesterday on a lot of levels. It got very interesting after a late caution. And in the end, this gentleman, Alex Figge, ended up second after starting on pole. But as we've talked about with the uh, DQ of the, uh, the Privacy Star and Trust Boys and a good friend of yours, Ryan Dial, and I know that that adds a whole different level to this, you ended up getting the win. Good news, pole, win, led most laps. So you've got a nice point lead at this stage, but it was a frustrating day, even though it was a strong day for you. Uh, you know, it, it was just complicated uh, more than anything. Um, you know, I was obviously upset at uh, the way some things went under yellow. 
and uh, and that was was where my frustrations came sure. from. It uh, it was a completely separate issue. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the actual on track activity, uh, Ryan drove a tremendous race, and and obviously the the true speed car was quite good. Uh, so that that had nothing to do with with anything that happened after the race. Um, nobody wants to win it in the tech shed. Mm -hmm. um, they've only announced three races. Yeah. If that's true. Um, you know, selfishly, then I'm glad to, to have the points because you know, if Ryan were to only do three, it, yeah. you know, it's nice to have a, a points lead because I'm, you know, doing the whole season with uh, with K Pax and Volvo, and um, you know, I don't really have a, too much of an opinion on it as far as uh, winning that way. You know, it, it's yeah. tough. Uh, the, certainly, the, the three people intimately involved with that program, Ryan DL, Tim Lewis, and Tyler Tadovic, I know very, very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at no point at any time in any of their racing careers have they ever intentionally oh, well, done anything yeah. uh, untoward or try to slip anything by anybody. So mistakes happen, and uh, you hate to see a winning result uh, end like that the next day, but, you know, what can you do? Costly oversight, really, was what that was when it you know comes down to. Well, everybody saw him, you know, trying. It's a new car, and yeah. they were trying to throw that thing together right before the race. Yeah. And when that happens, the the best guys in the world, I mean, you know, it, make mistakes, and it's that's you know, it, it's uh, nothing to stick your head in the oven over. It's oh, no, simply no, no. a a mistake, and and unfortunately a costly one when you win. Now you know it's the cliche. You've got that. Uh, at that point, we looked at it. It was like like a six second lead or whatever when that caution comes out. You know, you've been working through traffic and all of that, and then that you know that's gone, and there's just a few laps left. What does that do to your psyche? The way that the race went, and some of the procedural issues I had. You know, I'm not sitting here guilty. I don't feel like I lucked into oh. a point leading position. I, I did feel like I managed the race well. I felt like I was aggressive in traffic and did what I needed to do. Um, you know, Ryan and I both deserved a good result. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, you know, I would have been sitting here with you happy with second. But, uh, but you know, to have the first place points again, you're not going to give them back. He managed traffic brilliantly. Yeah, absolutely. Watching him come through the traffic and do that. And we talk about the Volvo and how great of a car that is and how the Volvo launches and every else car starts. Can you just kind of describe to the fans what it feels like on that initial you know, launch of the car in this Volvo? It's very, very quick. Um, there's no question. It, it has a massive launch. Um, I think the reason that, that you know, it's, it's not more absurd <laughs> later in the race is because you know, the, the Volvo weakens uh, quite quickly in the middle of the race because of, of the weight. Um, we ring them out mm -hmm. very, very heavily <laughs> throughout the race. And that's why you can see us coming back into the clutches of, of the Porsches and <laughs> certainly at this point, the Audis. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I think everybody kind of is like, you know, let, let Figgy and Post get a little bit, you know, before the car starts to go. Right. But um, it, it's, an, it's awesome. Uh, Justin Wilson is a good friend of mine. He told me that our data, the Volvo is going faster at the start than when they had traction control when he drove F1. Wow. Um, so uh, yeah, it. so when it hooks up, sometimes you just get like you mentioned that four wheel spin, right. but it is it is awesome from the driver's seat. It's fantastic, and it, it's fantastic to watch from a fan's perspective when those things just ignite and and uh, and to head off. Then the racing, of course, gets plenty interesting. And one of the things we've talked about interesting at this track is getting around this track. It's time for our Cadillac Key Corners with Johnny O'Connell, but today a little bit different look. You're also going to see Johnny at work in the office. He's good. St. Petersburg, Florida. It's where the World Challenge starts its series, the season, and these are going to be the Cadillac CTSV key corners. We're on the straightaway now. We're up in the sixth gear, hard on the brakes, and down into second gear for turn one. Difficult. A lot of paint that you run over there. Up in the third gear for turn two. We really start hauling in the fourth gear for turn three. Very fast corner. Everything's right. It's flat out. Up into fifth gear as we go into turn four, then boom, 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 down into second gear for turn four. This is a really fun part of the racetrack. Point and squirt. Accelerate hard here through six. Up into third gear, break down into second for turn eight. We bring it nice and tight to the wall. And let it run out close to the wall. Turn nine, important corner because we're coming up to a long straightaway here. Third gear, fourth gear. Again, these Cadillac CTSV key corners that came right there, it is one of them. Everything is right. It's done flat in fifth gear, but now we come into turn 10. We change down into second gear. Great overtaken area, but again, coming up to another very far, fast part of the racetrack. 11 and 12 done in fourth gear. You're flying in there, touching the brakes for 12. Okay, then hard on the brakes for the last corner on the racetrack. Very tight, but important because you need to get a good exit out of here 
to go up the gearbox, accelerate all the way up into sixth gear as you once again pass start finish St. Petersburg. We love starting our season here. Welcome back to the Optima Battery Fan Zone for our Pirelli World Challenge pre-race show right here at the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge presented by StopTech. Mr. Figgy, he had to get going, get in that driver's suit and get ready for the race. So now it's time for us to sort of put it on, on the line just a little bit. Pick a winner, pick a, uh, a guy to watch. Who's it going to be in GT for you? I got to go with Alex Figgy. I mean, the, the lead that he pulled out yesterday, if he can do that again today, launching from the second place mm -hmm. position, I think he'll pull that lead out and go. But the one to watch has got to be Ryan DL coming back from the back of the pack. If maybe we get a couple cautions mm -hmm. and he can get caught back up to the top of the field, I think he might be a dark horse in this. Yeah, he could be a player. I, uh, I think he's definitely the one to watch without doubt. Uh, I think too, it's going to be interesting because this is a standing start. Randy Post in that Volvo uh, qualified, I think in the third spot. So if he gets the launch and gets up front, if they solve whatever issue they had yesterday, he could be right in there. And, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how Sophronis manages things. He said that car gets better as it goes. GTS. Uh, Jack Baldwin's going to be hard to beat. I thought P.D. Cunningham would have a little bit of a better advantage uh, today. Mm -hmm. But with unfortunately with these cool temperatures, those rear wheel drive cars are going to be able to really conserve some of those Pirelli P0 tires and have a lot at the end. So it's going to be Baldwin or Lee, one of the rear wheel drive cars. Yeah. And I, the guy that I want to watch there once again is Lawson Aschenbach because he was just coming at the end of that until that of that contact could be interesting. And Mr. Gleason in the Navelden Porsche, you know, that car showed some very good speed as well. So uh, I think we're in for another barn burner. Different conditions on the street course today it's going to make it an absolutely fascinating day. So we're looking forward to round two, which is coming up. Jeff, you're going to head to the booth. I'm going to head out onto the pre-grid and get going with the uh, opening ceremonies for the race and the pre-race festivities. So when we come back, it is going to be the second round of the 2013 Pirelli World Challenge Championship, the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge, presented by StopTech. See you then. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge is being brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. By GoPro, be a hero. And by Pirelli, power is nothing without control. Tense and unique sports car racing on the planet. Multiple classes running at the same time, but in a sprint format. Some of the world's top manufacturers and the world's best drivers, all beginning with standing starts. It is truly sports car wars. For series and event ticket information, check out world-challenge.com to watch replays of all the intense action. Check out world-challengetv.com. And always check it out, Pirelli World Challenge on Facebook. Revs coming up, we're green! Big move coming off the three. Two, three, four, breast in some spots. Side-by-side -side action. He absolutely nailed it. Three-way battle. And we've got an incident. You would expect nothing less. Oh, clips the inside apex. Very racy. This is going to get interesting. Good good that is Look a brave move. move. What a pass. This is what World Challenge is all about. Welcome all of our worldwide listeners at world-challenge-tv.com. My name is Jeff Lepper. We just had our pre-race show here and boy, I worked my way over to the booth and we're ready to get started here as cars are on their formation lap as we get ready to start round number two of the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge presented by StopTech Brakes. This will be a standing start. We had a rolling start for those of you that joined us yesterday. We are doing a standing start today. And if you have not had a chance to see one yet, please come on up to the TV, get set and watch because right now on the pole, based on the finishing laps of a uh, fastest race laps of yesterday, it is going to be James Safranis in his Global Motorsports Group Mobile One Audi R8 LMS. Starting second right next to him, race winner now from yesterday, Alex Figgy out of Denver, Colorado and his K-Pax Racing Volvo S60R. For those of you that saw Ryan DL take the victory in his interest, Privacy Star, Bridge Hampton, Porsche 911 GT3, uh, competition adjustment there with a bad... Uh, had a splitter infraction during post-race inspection. They moved him back to the third position now, so Randy L starting in the third place. Starting fourth, Randy Popes in his K-Pax Racing Volvo S60R. That completes both rows. Waiting for Greg Creamer to get up in the booth here for me. Just got done doing his pre-race show at Pre-Grid. So going to our Motul race analysis now. This is a 1.8 mile, 14 turn course here on the beautiful waterfront in St. Petersburg, Florida. It's gonna be a 50 minute race or 34 laps, whichever comes first. 
going to our Pirelli storylines presented by Volvo. It's got to be Ryan Dial. Ryan Dial got that disqualification, was moved to the back. The team lobbied, got moved back up to third place now. And we'll have to see now if Alex Figgy can do what he did yesterday and move up back through the field, uh, back to the front of the field and pull that big six second gap like he had before and bring it on for a win. So looking at our Cadillac Escalade, the official safety vehicle and pace car now of the Pirelli World Challenge there. It's one of those great vehicles to look at, but we always hope that we never have to use it. All of our cars coming up now. Like I said before, this will be a standing start. We do leave a little bit of a gap between our GT and our GTS category cars. So you'll see the great SCCA Pro Racing staff there coming up to get all the cars in position. Talked to James Safranis a little bit earlier about his Audi. He says his trash control and launch control is not quite set up yet. So we're going to have to really pay attention to how great of a launch he gets with Ryan Dial and his Porsche right behind him. But when we say that all the cars do a standing start, every car in the field launches from the field with those Volvo K-Pax S60Rs. You watch those cars launch, the rest of the cars start. Well, just a little bit here, the lights will come on. As soon as the lights go out, we will be underway here to start round number two of the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge presented by Stop Tech Brakes. Greg Creamer in the booth now. Joining myself, Jeff Leppers, we're here with you for round number two, Greg. And, uh, Boy, is this going to be an exciting start. Watch this, folks. It's going to be an absolute amazing time. Without a doubt. Uh, and you, you heard James Safrona say it. We don't have launch control yet. He goes, I got an out, or a, a Volvo on my shoulder. I got another one right behind him. He said, this is going to be interesting to see. He said, but we do have a great race car, and that's what's going to play out here. Looks like they are just making some last-minute adjustments on the grid, talking to some of the drivers. And we're going to see what unfolds here, but this one should be amazing. 50 minutes, two classes. GT and GTS only, it's thunder time here at St. Pete, and we hope it's that just is uh, simply figuratively and not literally. There's the green flag. We'll hold the five-second board up anytime between now and then. Those red lights will come off. And that's when we go racing. It, uh, you don't wait for anything else when that red light goes off. And there it is. And as you would expect, look at that launch by the two Volvos. Dial getting a great start as well. That drive weight right over those rear wheels. And one of the Cadillacs down to the inside, not quite able to get it done. And uh, just that quick, Safrona's pole to fourth. That's what makes this such an amazing thing, these standing starts. And right away, those Volvos are gone. Yes, it's Alex Figgy in the lead, of course. Randy Pope second right there. Some contact now between one of the Global Motorsports Group Audis there. So definitely some tight racing here on this tight street course at St. Pete. Two Cadillacs are hooked up. Right behind them is Tim Pappas in that black swan. Mercedes-Benz AMG SLS GT3. And uh, then he's got Mike Skeen behind him. So Pap is getting a great launch. Oh, and Peter Lesafri in the number 33 Fusion Worldwide Green Hornet Racing. Mercedes AMG SLS GT3. Looks like he just tanked that wall. Hopefully nothing severe and he'll be able to continue with it. Yeah, you saw that carbon on that front end moved over a little bit. But yep. I did see the tires turn at the last minute there. Hopefully he'll get back underway so we will not have a full course yellow. Yeah, I'll tell you, one of the things in talking to a number of, of, of the drivers and team people was they said yesterday's race, one of the, we do have a full course caution. A full course caution is going to be coming up. You can see we get a little bit of, if you're watching the big screens, there's a little bit of uh, moisture on the lenses here. So things are changing up. But a lot of the guys said yesterday's race, they said one of the longest green flag runs we've had in years here at St. Pete. And they said we were in kind of unknown territory on management of tires and brakes and stuff. They said we were using stuff up. And uh, yeah, they said that's something we're going to be looking for today. But it's cooler today. That'll help, and of course, who knows with this little bit of sprinkling. Yeah, it's kind of hard to set up when you go by patterns and averages, and averages we've always been under a yellow a lot here, and to have, you know, 28 laps of green flag racing yesterday straight through, I think a lot of people weren't really ready for that. And we just got word from race control that this will be a one lap. The car moved on its own, and oh no, more problems, more smoke. Uh, from that uh, best IT car. It did that yesterday, it, but it didn't do it this early. That's a concern. Yeah, they said it was just a loose oil fitting is all it was, but now I kind of have to wonder if that was something more as we see Brandon Davis now coming down pit lane. Has a ride the rest of the year. True Speed was gracious enough to put him in the yeah. car, just doing a start and part to get some points. We'll see him in Long Beach, hopefully, for the rest of the year. And, you know, that's a, ooh, uh, Mr. Golanello, a little bit of a wrinkle on that uh, backside of that uh, Beautiful Mustang, so the, been a little bit of tinking going on in the early going. You know, what you were talking about with the True Speed boys stepping in, you know, that's a guy who's going to be going after them in terms of points for a championship, and yet they give him a car, let him get points that could 
play. That's the camaraderie in the Pro League World Challenge paddock. That's one of the reasons this series is so very special. A little bit of debris out there, Jeff. Yeah, it really uh, got to go get that removed, of course, here. But hopefully we'll have a, a really quick. That's in turn nine for that debris. So we do have pace car lights out. Looks like that's just a small little piece of plastic. and let that leave as we see the Mercedes coming down into pit lane. The crews will check it out. That car had a huge shunt at Sebring yeah. and testing, so that front end's already not perfect, and uh, definitely that team was not looking for this. And, uh, uh, absolutely, too. absolutely. And the nice thing is he moved on his own, so they were able to just make this a very quick one, so really no big effects. I think one of the great corner workers in the Sports Guy Club of America run out and grab that piece of debris because all the cars are packed. So hopefully that'll happen. So watch for it, folks. It's time to go back to green here at St. Pete, round two. And just a small amount of the 50 minutes eaten up here. Oh, some of the guys getting runs at the back, trying to gas it up front. The two Volvos, and there's the all. Remember what he did at the restart yesterday, if you were watching? Couldn't quite get it done today. Safrona's trying to make something happen. And Randy Popes making sure nobody's there. Look at those two Cadillacs side by side. Yeah, side by side in the Cadillac. But how about the start from Jeff Courtney and his yeah. Audi? He was way up there right alongside of Mike Skeen. Great run for him. Had a gearbox problem yesterday. Saw the Audi customer program changing that gearbox for him. Great job by him. Yeah, and look at Skeen trying to work around the outside of Andy Pilgrim. Tough quarters right there. And uh, there couldn't have been room for a piece of paper between that bet yeah, and that Yeah, Mike Skeen used every single bit of those Hawk brake pads to get that car rolled down there for no contact in Andy Pilgrim. Yeah, incredibly close racing, but these guys are pros, and that's what makes it such a joy to watch and uh, putting on a great show. I had a chat with Randy Popes, and I said, was there something wrong yesterday? And he goes, traffic was what's wrong. And he said, he said, not from in front. He said, that was the thing. He said, Alex was catching traffic and working it beautifully. He said, I had all that pressure from behind, so I'm having to defend a little bit. Slows you down in, slows you down out. And that's how I got gapped. And he goes, and then, you know, late in the race, he goes, as we use our cars up a little bit more because of the weight with the all-wheel drive, the other guys could get jumps. And, and he said, that's just how it played out. He goes, I'm hoping things are a little bit better today. And a big loop down there in the hairpin. Yeah, the Kenda RexStuff.com, yeah. Audi R8 to Jeff Courtney. We just talked about him. I guess he gets that announcer curse and spins down here in turn number one and still stalled, trying to get that car refired and back underway. Boy, and he was, he was sure aggressive early. He was making some nice moves and everything but uh, just could not quite control it, trying to go to the throttle hard and Sorry get another that. run. Yeah, back in turn 14 for yep. Courtney there. Just want to clarify that for all the fans out there that saw him down in turn 14 instead of turn one. As Mike Skeen now right on the backside of Andy Pilgrim there, and Mike Skeen in that Hawk Performance Chevy Corvette as we go back to our GTS leaders now. Look at that. Lawson Aschenbach up to second. Andy Lee smoking big time. Yeah, that's serious smoke. And the problem is, is is some of that, is that actually fluid that's getting down onto the track? They're going to be watching that very carefully. Right now, Mr. Gleason, if it is, is getting a windshield full of crud, and visibility could play a huge issue. Well, I guarantee you, even if he's not, I guarantee you Kevin Gleason's at the ready to go, and he is, my God, come oh, on. Oh, you know it, you know it. And getting word now, yes, that SCCA officials are going to call him in to have him look at that because it is smoking, so a... A black, mechanical black yeah. flag for Andy Lee in his uh, Crown 7 Best IT Chevy Camaro. You know, and that's obviously going to knock him back quite a bit. And, oh, and look at Petey Cunningham looking at Gleason. Couldn't quite get it done. But when he does that drive through, it's going to knock him way down the order this early stage of the race. And, uh, you know, this is a guy who certainly is going to be a player for the championship. And uh, here he comes into pit lane. And they're going to be out, you know, they're going to give this car a good thorough going over. So it's not just going to be a quick drive through. This is going to be a stop and check. And that's going to be an issue up front. It continues to be Figgy over post. And, you know, Randy, ooh, that oh. is our uh, ooh, BMW. That's and there's a bit of a wrinkle on the, uh, on the front end of that. Yeah, Drew Riggett's there in that BMW M3 there. And that looks like uh, we got Jeff Courtney back again. But uh, some big front end damage there on his BMW M3. Yeah. There's uh, Sophronis trying to stay with and maybe work over Ryan Dial a little bit in that orange and yellow Porsche right there. Then Sophronis, then the two Cadillacs. And then the uh, ever persistent Mike Skeen. Again, talking to Randy, and we were talking about you know the race that he had versus Alex's racing. So one of the things is, is he said, Alex is just hooked up and fake. He's always been faster. He's hooked up. Randy said, I love this track. He said, but there are a couple of spots where Alex is just flat quicker than I am right now. Refreshing honesty from a multiple champion in this class. He's going, I've got to step it up. That is awesome That's, to have that, that, that is. especially because. Uh, not that Alex plays second fiddle. I believe oh, both no. cars are on there, but with the experience of Randy Popes and being a four-time champion in the Pirelli World Challenge, uh, to have Alex Figgy come out there and really just putting a whooping on you, it's great to admit that that's what's happening. Yep, that's exactly it. And, and 
that's the thing. A champion will look at the data, will say, where am I losing? What is he doing different? Let's try it. They were talking about that Alex coming out of 14 onto the front straight tends to get much more aggressive on the throttle while he's still got steering input. Randy said, I tend to have it unwound a little bit before I get real aggressive because I may have to try that because it's certainly working for Alex. So, you know, even a four-time champion, always learning. Well, he actually learned a little bit here because we saw this earlier in yesterday's race, but Alex really pulled away, and now Randy's right on the back bumper there. And uh, I think Randy sit there and study data all night last night to see where I can get this guy at. And I think one of the things Randy's liking is looking in his mirrors and seeing Zafron is really occupying Dial right now. And so Dial's going to be doing what Randy had to do yesterday, defend that little bit, which just doesn't allow you to drive your fast lines. Interesting, completely different lines right there for these two. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but we did see some raindrops still on those screens there. And, of course, that's going to play into the hands of these K-Packs racing Volvo S60Rs if we do get a little bit of dampness. But with as warm as the track is, we had a couple of support races a little bit earlier this morning. It's going to have to really, really get uh, real wet for yeah. the come in and change those pearly P0s to rains. Yeah, you know, it's a certain point here. The tires are hot. They can evaporate, the, you know, the water off, and the track will evaporate it off. It's going to be interesting. That piece of debris, that really shouldn't be an issue. That is way offline. Does, though, look like it's a mirror, so we got close quarters race. Battle of the brands. Key. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody is not paying attention to their mirrors now, and not that they ever did anyway. That's right. Obviously, that's why the mirror's on the ground. That's the extreme reaction when your crew guy says, just turn your mirrors down and go. Well, just knock it off. Then you got no choice. We saw this yesterday from James Safranis trying to do that with the Cadillac of Johnny O'Connell. Now he is on it with Ryan Dial. He did say he's going to have to start from the back here because he was not going to get a good start. Still have not configured that trash control in that car and the launch control, but... He is right on the heels of Ryan Dial in that interest Privacy Star Porsche 911 GT3. And it's third place for Ryan Dial. The battle right now for third over James Safranis. Yeah, that's just some great stuff. And then lurking, always lurking. O'Connell, Pilgrim, Skeen. They've gapped now Dreesy just a little bit. And then uh, we've got the battle back in the GTS ranks. And I guess and that's Mr. Uh, Gelati in there. So working around for the seventh, eighth, ninth spot. Gelati, Udell, Curtin. Ooh, Harry Curtin taking a look down the inside of Lou. Not quite able to get that done. Yeah, nice dude. to have Lou back in the championship. Yeah, it really is, man. Uh, go all the way back to the old uh, SCCA Escort Endurance Series days and the stories that my dad would tell me of what him and Lou Gelati used to do. And, you know, take a bolt-in roll cage into a leased car and bring it out <laughs> and start racing. I mean, it's just amazing. And Lou Gelati, what a great personality and a great competitor to have in this sport. Absolutely. And speaking of personalities and competitors, Jack Baldwin, the uh, leader in GT3, that uh, it, just an incredibly beautiful car to start with. And then uh, you got a guy like him driving it. They've got a great package together. Uh, Goldcrest Motorsports doing the prep, the team, the whole package. And Jack, what a pass he put on yesterday to get the invisible uh, in glass clean move of the race award. And it was exactly that. Yeah, no body contact at all. And Jack Baldwin actually said, man, that Andy Lee kid, he is fast and clean yeah. <laughs> and smooth. And, you know, Andy's just excited that I'm here with this legend. And here is this legend here, you know, complimenting him. And boy, look at your pick there, the number 10 Black Dog Speed Shop Chevy Camaro of Lawson Aschenbach. You called it, and there he is. Yeah, I talked to him after, after uh, you know, he got here for a little while, and I was, I, was, I was chatting with him, and he made the comment. He said, he said, that car, he said, every session, these guys have tweaked it, tweaked it, tweaked it. And he said, it's still not quite there. He said, but right now, it's a car that I can hustle if I have to. And is he ever? What a run by Aschenbach. What we were just, this is a good battle here. This is Dreesy uh, right there. Brett Curtis in that Spectra Resources Audi. Uh, Duncan Endy in the Audi. Pappas in that beautiful Mercedes. And now we go up front because this is when things get interesting in the Prelly World Challenge. As you get into traffic and you saw just that little bit of a balk for those two Volvos. And that little margin they had is gone. Dial all over the back of him. And look at Sophronis just running outside if he has to to make sure he doesn't lose touch. And then those two cats, I mean, look at that. Dial so close. And uh, again, Popes has to go offline to defend. And this is where things get very, very dicey indeed. These two Volvos now on the power are going to be able to come through. No, and again, that is uh, something that Alex has been brilliant in this whole week in his traffic. Yeah, look at James Safranis there trying to go on the outside. Three wide into turn number seven. Not going to be able to hold that as Ryan DL settles for third still. But, boy, the battle is on as they go through the lap traffic of GTS. Yeah, and that's Tony Gaples who's now in GTS for the first time after all of his runs in GT going, this is insane. Yeah, and Tony actually had a drive-through penalty, unfortunately, a little bit earlier. Yeah. That's what put him back there. So definitely not the result he was looking for. Just saw somebody ducking into the pits. Not exactly, couldn't quite see who it was. 
And here come the Volvos now, and here we go. And look at Figgy, that car, nicely done, staying way out there, yeah, and letting him go through, and I think he's going to let uh, Popes go through as well. I hope he knows the train that's behind him. Yeah, Artie Topi there getting well out of the way in his Ford Mustang Boss 302. Great job on, on a heads-up driving job there, seeing Superb. the GT leaders coming yeah. and getting right out of the way. Don't want to did, affect this race at all. Did you see Skeen in the back in that Hawk Performance vet completely sideways, skating through there, absolutely unwilling to let go of those two Cadillacs and stay in this hunt? Uh, well, I tell you, you know, he is an amazing driver. And Ernie Francis uh, Jr. now in the hydraulic gene Chevy Camaro stop. And that's exactly where Rick Boucher stopped yeah. last race, so... We'll have to see if we go back under full course yellow. I know that's not what that young man is looking for, 15-year-old Ernie Francis Jr. Uh, he had a fairly short race yesterday as well, so laps is, uh, you know, he needs seat time. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, not a good spot. And There's I the think we're going to be, uh, we're really just kind of checking in with race control here and listening to see what might be involved. And so far, no call at this point. Yeah, still watching that battle take place between Tommy Dreesey, Brett Curtis, and Duck and Indy. So we're still looking at that right there. This is the battle between uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th for these cars. With Tim Pappas lurking there in that Mercedes-Benz SLS GT3. And look at this, James Safranos on the outside of Ryan Diel. He's trying it. Diel got trapped now. The thing is, what's going to happen as they get down here? Safranos is stuck on the outside through one, and he really didn't have an option. Uh, that's the move of a professional. No, nope, if I force the issue, I could take both of us out, live to fight another lap. However, that slowed him up, and O'Connell now is underneath that Audi's rear wing. And now you can see Safranis shallowing up those entries, slowing down your exit. That's not what he wants to be doing right now. No, not at all. And look at Alex Figgy, though, checking out again with all this battling taking place behind him. You know, you got to think uh, maybe there's some uh, little team orders there between the Volvos there. Randy kind of holding everybody up and letting Alex get ahead. I don't think so. I think Randy Popes, uh, he wants to be at the front and running. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I think Randy, it's exactly what happened to him last year, or uh, yesterday. This traffic and needing to defend is just messing him up. This isn't Ferrari. Okay, well, I'm trying to make a story here. But you did see Alex Figgy got a great gap there when yeah, Tony Gaples was there. Yeah. And I think from once when Gaples got between the two Volvos, that really let Figgy move out. Yeah, and I think I think that's it. This is the same thing. It's the traffic, and what Randy needs to do get, is get by some traffic and have Alex get hung up a little bit and just close white right back up on him. And you know, the only orders I know with the Capex team are: you race each other hard, do not hit each other, take each other out. So um, we know that's the case. That Jim Taggart, that beautiful Lotus, and you know what? You never look at the you know some of these race cars as being that big until you see that Lotus right there in the mix. Small, agile, a lot of fun. And look at this pressure again, and Dial has picked that spot up on Randy Popes and has moved around and slotted now into second. And Randy, again, pressure relentless. Once Dial goes by, no break. He's got um, Sophronis right on his tail as well. Yeah, Dial played the lap traffic there of Harry <laughs> Curtin in that best IT. Absolutely perfect. You can see that being set up a couple turns before that. Yeah. Makes the pass. Ryan Dial in second now and there. They ran over that piece of plastic. No debris there, but uh, hopefully we're going to have to watch out for a cut tire because that was a piece of plastic, and there still is some sharp edges on plastic, and they destroyed it as they drove over it. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, Jeff Courtney has just had one of those races. He's had issues. He's been caught up in this and that, and then he was the one, that I think, that just drilled that. So that's just the way it is. So Dial, then Popes, and then comes Sofronis. But look at the margin once again that Alex Figgy has opened up. Uh, he just continues to stretch it right now. Uh, the guy is just clocking off some laps. And uh, the difference, 2.8 seconds officially between he and Popes. And uh, Randy just dealing with this traffic, and it's not on. Look at Skeen this time around the outside and makes the move on Andy Pilgrim. Uh, got the moves done mostly on the straight. Look at Pilgrim fighting back, Jeff. Finally, Skeen able to lock it out. Yeah, great job and great pass by Mike Skeen as we go now to Jack Baldwin in that Motul Stop Tech Porsche Cayman S. Boy, is he uh, leading flag to flag so far. Has about a almost a three-second lead now over Lawson Aschenbach in his Black Dog Speed Shop Chevy Camaro and Lawson doing a great job with Kevin Gleason from Napleton Porsche right there. So it's still anybody's game in GTS, but a lot bigger gaps that we see in the GTS than we do in the GT category. Yeah, and Lawson has had to hustle that car up from where he started, get around a couple of guys, move into this, 
and Jack has just put his head down. And we've talked about the balance, the weight, the power differences in the Porsche and in the the, the big bore Camaros. And uh, I think mean, right now Jack is going chase me. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drive as fast as I can, take as little out of the car. I know for you to run there, you'll have to take a little more out of the car. So I think uh, again we're seeing the. A mind of, you know, 40 years of racing experience and Jack Baldwin going, okay, I'm going to play the game this way today. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when it comes to strategy and race pace and race, uh, you, can't, you yeah. can't beat Jack Baldwin on that. There's yeah. no way. And, you know, getting back to, you know, your thing about K-Pax and Pope's holding everybody up, I don't think that was the plan, but he sure didn't want to let Dial go by because we know Dial is quick. And if he gets in front of Randy, we've seen him be able to run down later in the race. Figgy, he did it yesterday. So, Randy, it wouldn't have bothered him at all to be able to, uh, to uh, keep Mr. Dial parked. Yeah, I would never, uh, never, ever insinuate yeah. he would ever do anything like that. And, of course, no, of Randy course Pope's not. one. My first ever driving instructor when I was a kid, and uh, you know it was great to be able to interview him. I'm like, here, take a picture. I'm interviewing Randy Pope. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah, so, so you started right at the top in terms of uh, instruction, huh? Yeah, but I went downhill from there. Once you go to the peak, you can't go any higher. Well, okay. We're looking at Mike Ski now in that Hawk Performance yeah. Chevy Corvette over Andy Pilgrim now, and kind of gapped Andy a little bit. So Mike Skeen's got that Corvette hooked up, and uh, you know, trying year for him last year, you got to get that Nissan GTR developed. Had that huge shunt in Detroit with a GTR, and uh, came back in the yeah. vet, won at Canadian, Canadian yeah. Tire Motorsports Park, a doubleheader there, and uh, still got to get that in there, and we'll see him hopefully in a Nissan GTR later on in the year. Yeah, they're, they're continuing to develop it. Tim Bell doing that development work right now. We got somebody going mighty slow Looks here. Like it Looks like Richard Gallinello, I believe. Yeah, and he had that uh, he had that damage to the back of the car. Okay, not sure what uh, the problem is there. You saw the headlights turn off. It's back on again. He stops just shy of the start finish line on the front stretch. Um, not sure what SCC will do that, but they are calling it now. We'll get a, a hear on that. And here comes James Stefanis now trying to look on the inside of Randy Popes and two veteran racers there, I don't think they're going to rattle each other's cages at all. No, no, no. And one of the things, you know, people tend, you know, you know you're looking at you, uh, you know, some of the guys that have had a tremendous history in World Challenge just in terms of longevity. James Sofronis is one of them. He's, uh, like, I think third all-time starts, all starts in, the, yeah. in the championship. So a very, very savvy racer. And, uh, you know, this team is a pretty unique program, what they have, have put together and have done a huge manufacturer change to this Audi R8 LMS and have not missed a beat. Global Motorsports Group, that prep shop uh, out of, uh, well, it's a prep shop, but it's also an aftermarket high-performance tuning shop for high-performance you know, high supercars out in California, and there's something else. Yeah, I tell you what, he almost, uh, he almost laughed at himself a little bit earlier today. He says, at Long Beach, our home race, we'll have seven cars there. And he's, uh, he goes, we're just have to close the shop and bring everybody in. That's right. <laughs> it's game over. Going back in the pack just a little bit. This battle, Duncan Endy now has gone around Dreesey. You see Duncan in that blue and white Audi R8. And uh, also in that mix, Dreesey, then Curtis, then Tim Pappas in that black swan Mercedes AMG SLS GT3. Yeah, well, I'm waiting to see the development on that car because to see the Mercedes-Benz come into the series now, see how great the Pirelli World Challenge is, teams like Black Swan Racing coming in, Green Hornet Racing with the Mercedes, yep. it is going to be a great year for the battle of the brands to see all these different makes coming in. And to come in and be as competitive as Tim Pappas is right now, that shows yeah. the level, the caliber of that Black Swan Racing team. And, boy, I'm just looking forward to this year. Yeah, I mean, in the American Le Mans GTC Championship, They've won a couple of those titles, both manufacturer and drivers. He's certainly got some skills, and he's in a great race right now, superb, with Dreesy, Curtis, and Pappas battling right now for the ninth spot. Great action everywhere on the track here at the Pirelli World Challenge Championship. Second round, the St. Petersburg Sports Car Grand Prix, presented by StopTech. We're going to step away for just a minute. Folks on the web stream, we'll be right back. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge is being brought to you by Optima Batteries the ultimate power source by GoPro be a hero and by Pirelli power is nothing without control the Pirelli World Challenge the most intense and unique sports car racing on the planet multiple classes running at the same time but in a sprint format some of the world's top manufacturers and the world's best drivers all beginning with standing starts it is truly sports car wars for series and event ticket information, check out world-challenge.com. To watch replays of all the intense action, check out world-challenge-tv.com. And always check it out, Pirelli World Challenge on Facebook. 
Welcome back, everybody, on the World Wide Web. It is round two of the Prelly World Challenge Championships, the St. Petersburg Sports Car Grand Prix, presented by Stop Tech. Great battles everywhere on the track, and we now have our overall race leaders getting into the mix with our GTS race leaders, and that uh, always makes things very interesting. And look at this. There's Randy Pope sitting in the uh, third spot, being chased by Sophronis, and uh, not too uh, far back or up in front, you see right there is the leader of the race, but uh, Ryan Dial. But keep in mind, there's Gleason, one of our GTS front runners, sitting in third. Aschenbach in that black Camaro. This is going to get interesting. Yeah, Alex Figgy now right behind Jack Baldwin. So you got your first place in GTS yeah. and first place in GT right there. Going to be side by side in just one second. So I know the guys don't want to mess up each other's races, but you still got to get going because you got guys like Randy Popes and James Safranis hot on your heels. You have to get that. And, of course, you can't count out Ryan DL there. Up to second now yeah. in his privacy star in trust, Porsche 911 GT3. Yeah, and he's throwing down some some pretty good laps to be sure. And that's all, you know makes it fun as well. And uh, just watch Safronis right there. He worked that traffic of Gleason to perfection. Didn't force the issue going into that high-speed kink, turn nine. Just breathed it and used that great exit speed and that power of that Audi to get him on the exit. And, you know, that sometimes you, you give up a lot less ultimately by giving up a little early going in and making that work. And look at Dial diving down the inside of two GTS cars. He is coming once again. That last lap, well, pretty even on that last lap, 16-6, 16-7 for Figgy and Dial, but that margin is shrinking. That's the story right now. Keep in mind the margin, a lot that long ago, 2.7 seconds, one. Yeah, he's definitely closing in on that as uh, now Randy Pope's got around Jack Baldwin there. Kind of puts a gap between Baldwin and Sofronis now clocks those two. It looks like another Mustang there. That's uh, Mitch Landry, the yep. Versa Crane Ford Mustang Boss 302S there. So great to see Mitch Landry come in, a rookie in the series now, and uh, glad he's part of here. That Mustang continued as well, strong in the GTS category. Yeah, he really is. Uh, he's, you know, he's driven Mustangs for a while, the old Mustang Challenge. He did some, some laps in those there. So that's nice. Sophronis now getting by GTS leader Baldwin. Now look at this. Down to the inside comes O'Connell, and that traffic has allowed O'Connell to close right up on the back now of Soprano. Yeah, it's getting really close there as we do see uh, J uh, Jack Baldwin there now, and Lawson Aschenbach is able with the traffic now. Look at that. Bounces up there behind Rick Boucher, and Lawson yeah. right there now only a couple car lengths behind Jack Baldwin, and Jack does not want to see that. Of course, that black, black dog speed shop, and I think that's really like the fifth session this car has yeah. ever been on track. So that car probably has less than like 200 miles on it and oh, here he easily, is yeah. fighting for the lead now in gts at round number two you couldn't ask for a better prep on that car from that black dog speed shop no they it was great what they did in lawson you know he said it it isn't where we want it even yet but as i said he said what they've done is they've given me a car i can hustle if i have to and lawson is a superb talent and we're seeing that on full display right now and that's the story of the of the world challenge Paddock, the Pirelli World Challenge Paddock, the level of drivers in this championship in every category are extremely strong. There goes Dial, and it looks like in that last exchange of some traffic, he lost a little bit of that ground again to Alex Figgy up front. Yeah, he sure knows how to work Tony Gaples. It's the second time he's put Tony Gaples between himself and second place, and uh, I think Alex Figgy needs to go give Tony Gaples a good shake of the hand there for helping him do that because he really worked that perfect. Yeah, he, he set him up. He used it beautifully. Keep in mind that Tony Gaples won the uh, hard charger, uh, the Sunoco hard charger in the race yesterday uh, with an amazing launch. But then the better thing, something he does incredibly well is pass cars. You know, Tony, he admits, he goes, I'm not the greatest qualifier, but he get out. So he went through nine GTS cars in an unbelievably deep field to make that move here in the Pirelli World Challenge and move up like that. So congratulations. As usual, Tony gets that award so often. Yeah, that is amazing there. And just, just watch Alex Figgy here in that Capex Racing Volvo S60R. He's not putting one wheel wrong right now. It is yeah. absolutely on a rail. Nice over the bumps, handling perfectly, and the same deal with Jack Baldwin. I mean, both of our leaders right now putting on a driving clinic, folks. If you want to know how to wheel a race car, you need to watch these two leaders right now because it is absolutely brilliant the way these drivers are handling these machines today. Yeah, and for these guys like Baldwin at, at his level that are getting overtaking, overtaken, he's been in classes where he's been the overtaker. He understands how that works, so he's working with these guys as they come through to minimize the, their impact on him, and he's giving them when he can, giving them the room and, and making them stay put until 
uh, you know, it goes through so that he's not getting caught up too much and losing time to a very insistent Lawson Aschenbach. You're right. It's great to watch these guys do the job. Ooh, a little wide there. Yeah, Alex Welch way <laughs> wide there as he tries to go down to Tim Pappas there for ninth place now. Welch in 10th. That beautiful, once again, Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. The chrome wrap on that car is just amazing. It's And they're polishing it. And so you can go up there. I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to check in my hair. Oh, wait, I don't have any more anymore. Well, I'll tell you, when that car first rolled out and it was sunny here, and just the glint, the glint of that thing and the gleam off of that was, was really nice. And it's just a beautiful car to start with. And then you put a wrap on it like that. That's something Black Swan, I mean, their race prep uh, has been superb from day one. And anything that they've done. Yeah, speaking of race prep, too, later they are putting, uh, passing Nick Asan and his real-time racing Acura TSX. And Nick, of course, does some great charity work and how he has the Wounded Warrior Project Fund out there and all those guys coming through the real-time pits. And I uh, can't thank Nick Asan enough for what he does for the Wounded Warrior Project as well as the Frelly World Challenge. Yeah, Nick is just an amazing guy on so many levels. Uh, one of the funniest human beings in the paddock and uh, also a, a, a heart and soul that goes mighty deep. You're right. And when you do come to a, your first World Challenge race, make sure you go to his pits and ask to see his bedazzled helmet. It is amazing. Isn't that cool? It really is it's cool. Not. He put some color on it this time. He's got yeah. red and blue now. I saw it the other silver. Yeah, yesterday, and I went, oh, Nick, that is cool. That is cool. So there's your margin. That was your leader, Phil. There's the all as they uh, are working down into turn one. And uh, he's turning uh, 169 for Figgy as we are in lap 22. Projected 34. We did have that early caution, but it didn't take much time. And again, Figgy running just a bit quicker. Not much, but a bit quicker than uh, Dial that last time. What is that? Uh, like a hundredth of a second, maybe? A little over a hundredth yeah. of a second. Yeah. Jeez, the gaps in this series. I don't count to the fifths. I only go down to the <laughs> thirds, third, so exactly. as far as we can go. Pope still third, of course. Safranis and O'Connell rounding out the top five. Skeen. Pilgrim, 6th and 7th. Duncan Ende up to 8th. Tim Pappas, 9th. And Alex Welch in 10th. And then running 13th overall in GTS. Your leader is Mr. Baldwin. Chased by Lawson Aschenbach in the number 10 Black Dog Speed Shop Camaro. And then uh, Gleason in the Napleton Porsche Cayman sitting 3rd in GTS. Then Petey Cunningham. And then Nick Janssen uh, has uh, gone around his teammate, Mark Wilkins, and Nick Janssen now completing the top 5 and the top Kia Motors America, Kia Optima at this stage of the race. And as you said, working lap now, 23 of a projected 34. And once again, James Sofronis has caught the back of Randy Popst. And these two guys, now they've done this so many years in so many cars. I mean, uh, Randy has driven a, a variety of cars. He's uh, His heart and soul is pure Volvo right now. But he and Sofronis in a variety of machinery over the years and in different classes have done this time and time again and it's so fun to watch these two season vets go after it yeah it really is and we talk about driving clinics i mean you look at <laughs> basically our top five and top 10 cars is a driving clinic here with randy popes in his k-pax racing volvo s60 we got right behind him james safranis now in that global motorsports group mobile one audi r8 and he is hot on the heels of randy popes now looking for a way to get around this volvo but that all-wheel drive S60 has so much grip with those Pirelli P0s coming off the corner. It's going to be a hard-fought run here to see if uh, Safranis can get up onto the podium. And the one thing James did say yesterday, he said, our car gets quicker as the race unfolds. And he doesn't have, he said, ooh, that uh, launch control and the like. So he didn't get that advantage. But again, it, he is so good on the brakes as this race gets going. And as we know, and as the uh, other Volvo guys say, because of the all-wheel drive, we run, we have to run a little heavier weight. And he said, so our cars tend to deteriorate quicker than the others in terms of getting used up. And Safrona says our car just gets better and uh, that makes for a long day for anybody in front of them. Well, Safrona is using every bit of track there. You saw he actually ran over that plastic debris again. Yeah. Diamond the uh, turn 14 corner, 13-14 complex coming down is going down in here to turn number one now to see if he can try to get a run down the straightaway on the K-Pax racing Volvo S60 of Randy Popes. Unable to do that. It looks like Randy just got way too much bite coming off the yeah. corner where Safranis has the more grunt down the straightaway and can get right up behind him. But boy, Ryan Diel just continues to inch that gap away. Yeah, and Diel, yeah, you're right. He's closing it right up. Safranis is right there. We had just a glimpse, and I want to give him a little shout. Bill Ziegler, one of the nicest guys in the paddock, the Swisher Racing G Global Motorsports Group Pontiac Solstice. We've talked about it before, probably un not by his doing, the unluckiest guy in the paddock. And it's great to see him out there right now just running some laps and being able to get some, us, us some time in, a former national champion and the like uh, in SCCA competition. So that's great. Safronis 
pops to the inside and makes the move. And uh, Randy saw it coming and, and uh, really did, you know, and I think Randy will say, boy, that was surgical. He just, yeah. he left it so late. I had nothing I could do about it. And Randy, such a seasoned vet, just said, all right, got me. Yeah, it looks like it probably looked up and said, okay, I'm clear. Got ready for the yeah. corner. And Safana said, oh, yeah, boom, got this right here. But, yeah, the Vogels are really starting to, like you said, starting to slow down here as we get in the later stages. But Pope still not giving up, looking on the inside. Down in turn number one, does he have it? He does not. James Safranis now closes the door. Third place, James Safranis. Fourth place, Randy Popes. Yeah, and you know, I mean, Randy's going to hound him. He's going to, you know, see it. Well, he got in front, but that doesn't mean I can't stay close, force him into some kind of an error perhaps, and that's the game he's going to play up front. Again, Dial, uh, that last lap, uh, lost a hundred of a second to Alex Figgy. That is such a cat and mouse game up front right now. It's pretty fascinating. Traffic is the, the equalizer at this point. I think Dial, when they're on their own at this point, is a little bit quicker, but oh, that's and Harry Curtin. Mm -hmm. oh, is that Lou Gelati as Lou well? Lou Gelati and Harry Curtin getting yeah. together in the two Mustangs. Looks like Lou's just going to pull it off. That car is wounded too bad. Lou already knows it. Harry Curtin had an accident yesterday, and looks like that right rear end of uh, there. And right up to our leader with Jack Baldwin. That don't want to have that happen. And Jack says, flashes the lights, get out of my way. And Lawson Aschenbach doing the same as well. Please do not do this. Here's a replay of the incident now. Yep. Lou Gelati looking on the inside. Into the ABS, comes in there, taps him in the back. And Harry... Yeah, Lou Gelati, I think, just got a great run there. Got in the brakes a little bit too late. Inside, Harry really didn't quite see him, I think, on the inside. Didn't expect him to be there. And uh, yep. unfortunately turned in, and uh, that was the result of the incident there. Close quarters, hard-fought racing, and uh, just a, get a little bit too deep. And, uh, you know, again, first weekend of racing for the season and, and uh, you know, under stress, late in a race and the like. Uh, these components, these things aren't great. Had a couple of guys talking about that. Uh, uh, Aschenbach said he had a little problem with his ABS yesterday. And he said, we think it was just a bubble uh, in the in the brake line, but it affected the ABS. He goes, I get to a certain point and I'd have no more pedal. And he said, that's a sketchy situation because I didn't have full brake. And he said, so that was, uh, you know, interesting. Just little things like that. Oh. Look at Alex Piggy there getting around the car of Nick Janssen. Oh, my gosh. And Rick Boucher there. Boy, he just squeezed right in between both of them. Great run. We said Alex Figgy, man, he is the doctor right now going through traffic. And, uh, yeah. boy, I had to hold my breath watching that. <laughs> Threading that needle, you man. Breathe that, now too. that was That was exceptional. Yeah, just I love watching these guys run. Some of the best drivers on the planet and in the Pirelli World Challenge with these great cars. It is something special indeed as we are. Coming up now, 35 plus minutes into the race, so still lots of racing to go. A good 15 minutes, and uh, the, for Dial again, that is what Figgy does so well. Into that first turn, you watch him, you know, and I've been seeing this out of the corner of my eye. He constantly gets a car between himself and Dial, and that means Dial has to wait generally all the way through one, two, and three, as you do here. Now Dial gets the guy, but guess what? So does Figgy with the next guy. Uh, his his timing has been impeccable. Some of it luck, but some of it plan. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of it luck, but boy, Alex Figgy, like I said, just a doctor sliding through. And Mitch Landry, I know, doesn't want to be in the way, but really has no choice. Single oh. file there. Turns on the inside of him. Contact there. Spins out the Versa Crane Mustang. That's really going to hold up Ryan DL there. And uh, boy, Mitch yeah. did not see him whatsoever. No, he certainly didn't. And, and Dial obviously anxious to not lose more time as he got so close. And uh, that was it. And, you know, that's the thing. These guys in GTS, you can't hit the disappear button. You know, I mean, you, you know, you've got, and they're always told, drive your line. We'll find a way by. And I think that was, uh, you know, Ryan thought, well, I think I'm good. And it looks like uh, the like L's going to have a left front yeah. flat tire. Sure enough, he is slow. That car is going to have to come down the pits now. The True Speed team will get that tire changed. But, yes, definite damage there. Look at that flat tire. That's, oh, it's. Oh, that's heartbreaking for that team after the infractions they had yesterday come back starting third today and, you know, a provisional yeah. winner yesterday. And here they come down pit lane. We'll see where he'll end up after they get that tire changed. But looks like Mitch Landry back underway and uh, not going to be happy there. Nope. And no full course caution. So things continue. Yeah, Dial, that's a tough, tough break. And uh, again, with a 50-minute sprint race format, you can't get into the pits and make it up when the, everybody else pits or has an issue five hours later in the race. It is on right now. And so Figgy now leads it, but Safronis up in the second. Popes now third, O'Connell fourth. And uh, Dial scored his fifth, but that's changing, obviously. Skeen will pick that up at this point. 
Baldwin, Aschenbach, 1-2 in GTS. Gleason, a solid third at this point. Cunningham, fourth, and Nick Janssen, fifth. Ooh, we got... Uh, that was... Uh, the car park. Ryan Dial going back yeah. out onto the track now as Jim Taggart pointing everybody by. Great heads up there from that load of succeed Jess driver here. And we got that tire change, and Ryan Dial is back out on course. We'll see where he shuffles around next lap. But, folks, this is your chance now. If you pay the old Facebook game of Car Town, we're going to give away a car now. I know a lot of folks there are waiting for that. And, boy, the action just gets heavy here. It's kind of hard to jump in here, but... The trivia question that you can tweet there, and look at that. There was contact again, Greg. Yeah, Dreesy getting into the back of uh, Curtis, and you can see the damage on the left front of Dreesy and the right rear of Curtis. That is tough, and Curtis, uh, that's got bodywork folded right down on that rear tire, and uh, that thing is just smoking like mad right now. Looks like the tire so far is okay, but it's going to be interesting. Oof. Yeah, they're both of those cars definitely wounded. Not sure if they're going to make it back there. And that's going to hold up our leaders now. There, Alex Figgy does not want to see this, wondering if there's any fluid on the ground as well. you got to be very, very careful. Great heads up from Tommy Dreese. They're getting out of the way now, knowing yeah. Alex there. And body damage there to Rick Boucher. His Nissan 370Z, the Motul Nissan, not want, he once had a, just a terrible weekend for that car. And there's you can see the skid marks going into the tire wall. Yeah, very, very frustrating to be sure. Oh, there's Curtis. That tire finally cut and went down. So now he's just going to have to limp that beautiful machine around to pit lane. And uh, speaking of tires in pit lane, how quick was that tire change by the True Speed boys? Oh, yeah, they definitely, are man. Something. Like you said, we said that professional team, yeah, that yeah. professional prep team, just a little bit of an oversight when you only have one week to prepare the car. Yeah. Figgy said it the best in the pre-race show. The best pro teams will even make a small oversight. But they sure made up for yeah. it with that pit stop. Oh, it's incredible. You know, they, uh, and this is, you know, being a sprint-type series, you don't practice pit stops. So for them to execute that quickly, that was pretty impressive stuff. So as we are looking at, we have about 10 minutes remaining as we're watching this car make its way down into pit lane. Meanwhile, back to action here. And uh, there is a look at Pappas. That's Duncan Endy that he's coming up on. And then Baldwin right in the mix right now. And uh, Alex Figgy on Figgy pit lane. In the pits. I wonder, did he get some debris from that contact? Looks like they're going for a tire change. Oh, they're going to the air jacks there. They got the air gun. Looks like the right rear tire. Oh, my God. This is going to be heartbreaking for him and this team. Absolutely, both on the same lap yesterday, the same lap today. That puts James Safranis now in that Global Motorsports Group. Mobile one, Audi R8 to the lead, but look at Randy Popes in that number six Volvo. k Racing S60R now. He's going to try to run him down. The crew has got to be on the radio going, come on, Randy, you've got to get James now. Four laps to go. Yeah, it's for the win now, buddy. You know, uh, Alex is not up there carrying the banner, so we're going to be going after it, and uh, let's see what Randy can do. It is so close at the front, Figgy heartbroken, but the team having a warrior, a four-time champion like Randy Popes, able to pick it up here and start staying with and chasing James Safranis. And Safranis got up there, got by him, and we thought, well, you know, Safranis looking awfully quick. Randy never did let him go. No, Randy just said, okay, fine, I'll save my car till the end, and maybe I can go for a run for second. But now I'm going for a run for the victory. And again, these all these guys, full season championship contenders, so points are key. Yesterday they may have played the point game a little bit because they had to race again in a very short period of time. Today there's a long time to get these cars reset and ready to go for Long Beach. So now you're willing to take that little bit more risk, show a little bit more aggression, and go after it. And right now James Safranis, in his mirrors, he knows Randy's there. So he, what he's going to do in traffic, this is going to tell the tale. But we saw a battle there really quick on the bottom of the screen there. Petey Cunningham and Kevin Gleason now for the battle for third in GTS. Not sure where that's going to transpire as we do see Randy Popes now stuck there with Mitch Landry on the lap traffic. That allowed Safranis to pull out away. Looks like two more laps to go. And your chance now to win a car town car from Facebook. Our question that you need to tweet to at WC Racing, hashtag Pirelli WC is how many Pirelli World Challenge car entries were here in the 2012 St. Petersburg. Remember, we had three classes then. So tweet that to at WC Racing, hashtag Pirelli WC. There is a look at Jack Baldwin, the Motul Stop Tech Invoice Prep. Porsche Cayman S, he has driven, as you would expect, just superbly in this one. Uh, when he's been in the craziness, he's just been precision through it. And he's when he's been alone like this, he's just laid down some laps, has that margin built up right now. 
over Lawson Aschenbach. There he comes. There's Lawson. It's not a huge gap, but it's enough right now that Lawson, uh, you know, he's just, they're, they're, they're running when they're by themselves. Pretty similar laps at this stage. And Aschenbach might be a tenth quicker here. And then suddenly, but P.D. Cunningham uh, right there in third right now as well. Gleason back to fourth. Nick Janssen fifth in GTS. Yeah, Cunningham did make that pass. I thought I yep. saw it. We could just barely see out of the yeah. bottom there. Way to go for P.D. Cunningham. Was in the trailer earlier saying, hey, you're my pick. And he's like, uh, why is that? I'm starting fifth. But, you know, great run for him. And up to the podium there is James Safran is coming down into turn number 14 in that Global Motorsports Group. Mobile One Audi R8 from Global Motorsports. Here it is. White flag as he crosses the start finish line. One lap to go. What a story it will be if he can hang on for this one. But look at Randy Popes. Oh, boy. Once they got clear, Randy is coming. Let's see those last laps. Look at that. Randy running almost a half second faster than Safronas. And Randy is there as they head around this wonderful track here for the last time, making that sweep now to turn three. And James, a little defensive. Randy shows the nose, keeps James pinned in. That could slow James up. Oh, but Randy actually, a little wide of the apex right there. They're staying put so close right now, up through the twisty bits. Four, five, six, seven. Here we go, up into turn eight. Key corner coming up, get that launch onto this long blast down Bay Shore Drive. Sfronis got a little bit of a margin there, Jeff. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens down here in the braking zone Traffic. in the turn 10 and not there. Traffic up ahead that might take place here between turn 11, 12, 13, and 14. Only a couple corners left, but Randy Pope's got to buckle down, get up on that wheel, run down that Audi. This is for the win in round number two. Here we go. Sofronis exiting the chicane, 11 and 12. One last run into the hairpin, 13. Now 14. It's a launch out. Randy going to the throttle hard, but Sofronis Gets on the hammer as well. Coming up on the traffic. Watch for the checker. It flies. And look at how close it was. Sophronis, I don't know that there was. I think Randy wow. was up alongside that, uh, that left rear wheel of that Global Motorsports Group Audi. And Sophronis. He wants to pate. Yeah, how about that? Look at that. Going to try to do some donuts there. Maybe the trash control's working now on that already. Can't quite do it, but there he goes. Way to go for James. We've got to give it up for that team. They stepped uh. in for the Children's Tumor Foundation as well. Had all the kids here yesterday. Stepped in for the ARC Audi racing program as well. Don Ishtuk, we know you're listening. We love you, buddy. Come back at Coda. We can't wait to see you there. And here's Jack Baldwin, your GTS leader now, coming around to get his checkered flag to make the sweep. Made the front page of the Tampa Bay Sports News yep. yesterday. Well, the interesting his victory thing is, well. is Jack used, lived here many years ago, and he, in a way, says this is sort of my my true home event because I'm, I'm living all over, of course, but this is where it all started. He loved racing here in the Trans Am Series back in its heyday in the 80s and, and 90s. He loves coming here and race. You know, lots of Aschenbach. He never just let him check out. He kept him honest. He stayed with him. He just didn't have enough for Jack Baldwin. And here we go. The Moat Tool, Stop Tech, Invoice Prep, GT Sport by Goldcrest Racing. Porsche coming by and picking up his second win of the weekend. This one he led flag to flag yesterday, that brilliant late race pass. And Lashen Aschenbach, after getting punted late in the going yesterday, ends up with a wonderful second place. Lawson loving that one. What a day. And for Global Motorsports Group and for James Sifronis, after debuting the Audi a little bit late in the year last year, just getting their feet wet, making this monstrous commitment to this very, very trick car and putting it together like this, Jeff, it was brilliant. You're heading out to do some NBC TV interviews. I'll be heading to Victory Circle pretty soon. Absolutely. What a great race, fans. Thank you so much for joining us on the web. And make sure, once again, you tweet your answer to our trivia question to at WC Racing, hashtag Pirelli WC. You, absolutely, folks. All right, Jeff, we'll be talking to you later. Great job today. Let's take a look. The top ten in GT, James Safronis with the win. Randy Popes right there for the podium. Johnny O'Connell at Cadillac being relentless and coming up third. Mike Skeen, that was a never-say-die drive to fourth. Andy Pilgrim completing the top five. Ryan Dial, after that rocket quick pit stop by the True Speed Boys, able to salvage sixth. Duncan Andy, seventh. Tim Pappas in eighth, Alex Welch in ninth, and Tommy Dreesey bringing it home in the tenth spot. So that is how that ran. And, of course, uh, we're going to take you through the GTS top ten as we look at it. Jack Baldwin, of course, we talked about completing the sweep. Just a great weekend for Jack. Lawson Aschenbach, uh, boy, what a great drive into second in that Black Dog Speed Shop number ten. 
Chevy Camaro. Peter Cunningham, seven-time champion, a second straight podium. Uh, Kevin Gleason, close once again in that beautiful Napleton Porsche Cayman. Nick Asan coming back up on top into the top five in his real-time racing. Acura, nice job. Nick Janssen bringing home the sixth spot. Tops for the Kia Optimas. Mark Wilkins, his teammate right there in seventh. In eighth, Alec Udell, ninth. The rookie Jim Taggart in the Lotus and completing the top ten. Another run up through the pack. You got to give it up to uh, Tony Gaples doing some strong runs as he comes up and completes the top ten. There's a good look at the field. So they've made their way into pit lane. The top three from each class heading to Victory Circle. That's where I'll be heading in just a moment. Out on the web, thank you so much for tuning in to our coverage here of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships. Round two from St. Petersburg, the St. Petersburg Sports Car Challenge presented by StopTech. Great to have you with us. And, of course, we'll be bringing you all the action coming up in just a few weeks from Long Beach, California. We look forward to bringing it to you there. Take care, everybody. Today's coverage of the Pirelli World Challenge is being brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source, by GoPro, be a hero, and by Pirelli, power is nothing without control. The Pirelli World Challenge, the most intense and unique sports car racing on the planet. Multiple classes running at the same time, but in a sprint format. Some of the world's top manufacturers and the world's best drivers, all beginning with standing starts. It is truly Sports Car Wars.